Tell me if this sounds familiar. You're watching a show or movie and you notice a subtle change in the depth of field that gets your eyes to notice something new in the frame or reveals some new detail in the scene you're watching. You've just experienced a rack focus. Hang on till the end of this video because I'm going to explain everything you need to know about rack focus, how to do it, how to use it, and why this technique should be on your next shot list. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a full-time working photographer, video producer, video editor, and technology pro. If you like what you see in this video, stick around to the end because I've got a couple of photography, video, filmmaking, and editing freebies, and even some training courses I'll tell you about that will definitely help improve your photography, video production, and filmmaking work and help grow your business through earned media exposure. Earned media is basically free advertising. You can help to support my channel by purchasing my training courses requesting my free downloads, and hiring me to shoot or edit for you. Remember, I welcome your comments, questions, and more on all of my videos. If you like what you see, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be notified every time I upload a new video on Wednesdays. I've also done other videos on improving your video production and filmmaking, and I'll link to those in the description below. So let me explain what rack focus shots are. Chances are good you've seen countless rack focus shots without even realizing it. Many are subtle and not meant to draw attention to themselves. Others are clearly designed to be seen, but first things first, let's define rack focus. A rack focus is the filming technique of changing the focus of a lens during a continuous shot. When a shot racks, it moves the focal plane from one object in the frame to another. This is also known as focus pull or pulling focus. The technique can include small or large changes of focus. The more shallow the depth of field, the more noticeable the transition is between the two focal planes. So what are some reasons to rack focus? To transition between scenes, to add dramatic flourish to a shot, to draw the eye to some specific detail, to connect elements or characters, to combine multiple shots into one, to follow a character's train of thought, and to reveal something hidden in the frame. Because rack focus is its own art form on a professional set, there's actually a job called the focus puller. The focus puller is usually also the first assistant camera or the first AC. The focus puller works in tandem with the camera operator to adjust the focus ring during the shot. The operator needs to pay attention to framing and camera movement, leaving the actual focusing to the focus puller because he's got a lot of other things to do at the same time. It's this delicate balancing act that requires practice and finesse between the actors and the camera department. Rack focusing takes a lot of patience and practice. So why would you want to do a rack focus? Shifting focus within the shot has many functions in visual storytelling. And while there are many creative and dramatic reasons to pull focus, there are also very practical reasons as well. In general, one of the immediate benefits is that you can get two or more shots for the price of one. The reason to pull focus is simple. You want to help direct the audience's attention to something in the scene. Therefore, the rack focus shot can be crucial to pointing out details to the audience. Let's review some of the creative and dramatic options for pulling focus. One is to get inside a character's headspace. Consider this scene from Road to Perdition. If you haven't seen it, this scene is all about Connor, Daniel Craig's character, and his strained relationship with his father, played by Paul Newman. He is also extremely jealous of the bond between his father and the character Michael, played by Tom Hanks. Watch how these complicated relationships play out and get capped by an excellent rack focus. As Rooney and Michael pass Connor, the focus follows them. Director Sam Mendes used this focus pull not to show us what Connor is seeing, but what he's thinking about, his jealousy, rage, and revenge. You can also create tension and suspense. 
The host uses this long hallway to pull focus back and forth between the main character and his siblings as they attempt to break out of quarantine. In this case, we pull focus from the foreground to the middle ground to the background and back to the foreground again. Not only does this capture four different shots in one, by keeping this action and pulling focus in a single shot, we feel the suspense of their casual escape. And when they're caught, the final rack focus signals their panic and the chase begins. You can also use it to establish relationships. Director Jean-Marc Vallée crushes the rack focus in Young Victoria. In this video compilation, watch how many different ways the focus pull is employed. It creates connections between characters, it transitions us from one conversation to the next, and it heightens the drama. We're able to dissect the relationships of who's who at the table. We can tell who's eavesdropping, plotting, and gossiping because we can seamlessly shift perspectives. Because the rack focus shot is exploited here, we can tell that the director has total control over the tension of the story. Unlike other camera moves, the pulling focus is able to be incredibly specific. It's almost like directing a spotlight onto a detail. So how do you rack focus? Let's think back to the rack focus definition and plan it out. Since we're dealing with precise actions, we need to prepare a few things in advance, namely the staging of our subjects and the distances involved between them. In order to pull focus, you first have to determine which objects you're going to move between. You'll also need to decide what the best method of actually adjusting the focus ring will be. Here's a quick step-by-step -step guide to pulling focus like a pro. Step one, gather the necessary equipment. First things first, you're going to need a camera with a lens that allows you to manual focus by having its own manual focus ring. Many consumer grade cameras have an autofocus feature, but you have no control over how or when it focuses. And this is far from ideal for this kind of shot. For low budget productions, you might be adjusting the focus ring directly with your hand. This method is doable with a lot of practice, but it can limit your ability to operate the camera. Many productions use a mechanical device called a follow focus. This is a device that mounts to your lens, allowing for smoother and more precise adjustments. There are even wireless follow focus systems that allow the focus puller to work without touching the camera, which is ideal when the camera is actually moving. Step number two, stage your camera and subjects. When you're creating your shot list, this is the time to decide what the subjects in the shot will be and their relative positions. Are you moving the focus between two actors? an actor and a prop or some other combination. Once you have the general setup, we need to decide on the depth of field you're gonna be using. Step number three is adjusting your depth of field. Within the rack focus definition, there are no rules as to how deep your depth of field needs to be. You can either deep depth of field or shallow depth of field. It all depends on what works best in the shot that you're shooting. The distance between your subjects and the depth of field will make the rack focus more or less noticeable. Step number four is to measure your distances. Once the character blocking and depth of field are finalized, you'll be able to measure the various distances between the camera and the subjects. There are a few ways to measure distance, which are typically directed by your budget. If you're working with a limited budget, you might be measuring and focusing by eye. Again, it's possible, but tougher to get pristine results. Most lenses have distances marked on them, but the best way to get true measurements is to actually do measuring. Using a fabric tape measure, you can precisely assess the distance between subject and camera. Remember to start your tape measure at the camera sensor plane, not at the front of the lens, because you have to account for the length of the lens. You're actually measuring to where the sensor is because that's doing the recording, not the lens itself. If you're using a follow focus, most of them have a white surface around the dial where you can make custom marks for each focal position. Audiences intuitively understand the language of a rack focus and they'll be able to spot an unmotivated focus pull immediately. Pulling focus is not easy, but it's a skill anyone can master. Therefore, you better get practicing. The better it looks, the more professional the outcome. It could be your calling card as a director, if that's what your goal is in film production. Now let's wrap up with a quick guide on how to add a rack focus shot to your next shot list. So, how to shot list a rack focus shot. 
So you set up a neat scene where you want to pull focus between two crucial objects in the scene. What do you do now? You need to put it in a shot list so your DP can anticipate and prep for the shot. Specific camera movements matter too. Are you going to rack focus while completing a dolly shot or is it a traditional pan and rack? You want to capture all these crucial details in your shot list. This allows you to create creative combinations that make your movie come to life. If this is making sense to you, but I've got it in the comments section below. My question of the day is, have you ever used rack focus in your shooting? Leave a comment below and let us know. If you found the info in this video useful, I'd love to hear about it from you. If you liked it and want to see more videos like this, then follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, for more. If you think what you saw was great, please like it. If you have an opinion, feel free to comment below. If you know someone who could benefit from the info I provided, please share the video. You can connect with me and my company, Jim Costa Films, on social media and online on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and the web by searching for Jim Costa Films. In fact, I currently have over 4,470 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out many of my other videos for great tips and suggestions. Thank you for sticking around this far. I mentioned at the beginning about some freebies and training. As a professional video producer and photographer, I've created an absolutely free cheat sheet for you on all the best camera settings to shoot with your DSLR mirrorless or video camera that will show you the settings that will allow your photos and particularly your videos to shine and stand out from the competition. The link to get that cheat sheet is just below in the video description. Best of all, my cheat sheet specializes in shooting video with any type of camera. In it, you'll find all the info you need on important video techniques such as white balance, color temperature, frame rates, and more. I've also created an editing training for Adobe Premiere Pro. My quick start training is designed to get you up in editing video in under two hours and includes more than 100 tips, tricks, and keyboard shortcuts for video editors. And now, I'm also affiliated with Christina Nicholson, a fellow media veteran like myself who helps businesses and entrepreneurs reach tons of their ideal customers or clients through the power of media without spending big bucks on advertising. I've worked with Christina and used her advice and training successfully so I know from first-hand experience that it works great. The program Christina and I are now offering is called the Media Mentoring Program and it will help you take advantage of mainstream media so you can stand out from the competition because that's not something everyone has access to. Best of all, unlike paid ads and sponsorships, you can gain lots of exposure and credibility for your business or service to become the go-to brand everyone wants to talk about and do business with without spending a fortune on advertising. Teaches you how to do things at little to no cost. I'll link to those cheat sheets and training courses in the description below as well. There's videos on both courses that will give you an overview of how they can help you. Finally, if you follow me for a while now, you may know that I have a private community of photographers, videographers, and filmmakers just like you on Facebook where I share other pro tips and tricks. It's called Video Producers and Content Creators. I love new members who want to share their work, learn from others, and also help others based on their own skills and experiences. You'll find a link to that group in the description below, so feel free to join it where you can learn even more.